Welcome back to the fish room, everyone. That can go down there, I think. So, if you've been watching the channel recently, you'd have seen I'd have shut down this tank, which was my old, uh, what was it? Chili Rasbora root system. I don't know what you want to call it. Chili cube, I think they call it actually on the channel. But I've just cleaned it out, just stripped it down. We were suffering a bit of hair algae, and now it's time to get it back up and running. And what I want to do and achieve with this tank is, well, a cold water setup. Now, when you think of cold water, you think of those old school goldfish, probably in a bowl, if we're honest, don't we? Um, and that's not what cold water fish keeping is really about. There are some absolutely stunning cold water fish that have been a staple in the hobby for generations that are way better to keep than your standard goldfish. Now don't get me wrong, I love goldfish. I do think they are a very cool fish. This is not a hating on goldfish video. It is just the fact that most people pick up a cold water aquarium, they get home, their instant thought is goldfish. And it's really not one that we want to foster or keep in the aquarium trade. Yeah, if you've got a big tank or a pond even, goldfish are a perfect addition to it. They're a great fish, they're intelligent, they're colorful, they're active, they're fairly easy to keep albeit a bit messy because they are a big chunky animal, but they are a great fish. So this video is in no way a goldfish hate video. Now, as I say, cold water fish, I keep saying cold water fish, they're not cold water fish. Let's address that quickly. So when I say cold water fish, it is just having an aquarium inside without a heater. That's all it is. So most people's houses probably run, what, 18 degrees, 20 degrees, probably. Mine certainly does, especially with all the fish tanks I have running in here. So when I say cold water tanks, I don't mean like freezing cold, middle of the winter, ice over the top of your aquarium. I just mean that there's no heater in there. Now there are a lot of cold water species that you can keep inside and are way better suited for an aquarium this size than a goldfish. You know, you imagine a goldfish, even your fancy varieties are gonna get yay big. So you imagine, I don't know, have I got a box? Actually, this filter box is probably the same size as a fully grown goldfish, maybe just under with its fins. So you can imagine that swimming around in there and all of a sudden your tank is full. If you've got one or two or three, they're gonna go to the toilet a lot, they're gonna eat a lot, and it's just gonna be messy. But things like your aquarium classics, like white cloud mountain minnows, that's what I've got my eye on, uh, rice fish, uh, varietas platys, uh, what else is there? Danios, zebra danios, leopard danios. There are tons of fish that you can choose from. Now in its previous life, this tank did have a very bright aquascaping style lamp on it. So it was very bright, wasn't really dimmable in any way, shape or form. And it was just a bit intense. Now that works if you plant up your aquarium heavily and you've got enough plants to overall the algae. But in this one, I've got plans to keep it a lot simpler and a lot easier. Now for that, I wanted a dimmable light. And Interpet have got a new Aquasmart LED out, which I was really intrigued to try because I've got a tank downstairs that I might want to run these on, but I want to see it on a smaller scale first. A big 300 litre cube downstairs. I think I want these on there, but we'll see, we'll see anyway. But this one is dimmable. This one's got an app where you can control the how much the lighting is, the sunrise, the sunset. It's got presets in it. It's got advanced mode so you can mess around with the lighting as much you want. So it's perfect for me because sometimes I want to stick a light on and just on it goes with the preset and it will go on and off at whatever times I tell it to. Other times I do want to start tuning in and messing around with the lighting. And that's why I quite like the idea of this. And also it comes in loads of different sizes. So it's good for this one because this is a 40 centimeter cube, maybe a 45 centimeter cube. Can't remember, but it's about a 40, 45 centimeter cube. Downstairs, my 300 liters, like a 60, 70 centimeter cube. So it's like over two foot cube. So I can get a couple of these lights, I think on that cube. I don't think I'll need two on this one, but a couple of them on that big cube to light the whole thing. So before I go any further, it'd probably be nice for you guys and girls to be able to see what I'm actually doing in this aquarium, wouldn't it? Nope, that was just a bit of the cardboard box, that's fine. So let's have a look. I know you can mount these in loads of different ways from what I've been reading. I need some scissors. So as I was saying, you can mount these in loads of different ways. You can mount them into old lids. Ooh, that's crackling. You can mount them into... I'm just gonna open this up without being on camera because this is really loud. Perfect. So, you can mount these loads of different ways. Now, obviously, I'm just gonna mount it over the top of this tank, but the cool thing is they come with these little brackets 
so that you can mount them into existing light units. So they, hang on, let me show you. This is what I quite liked. So you can mount them into old lids that have got T8 or T5 light bulbs and you can mount them straight into that, which is quite a cool little nifty design, I thought. But I obviously haven't got a lid on this aquarium. Oh, nice. Um, I obviously haven't got a lid on this aquarium, so I'm just gonna be using these brackets that slide out of either end and hopefully sitting it over the tank. That's too wide. And now it's too short. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, just sits over the top like an overtank luminaire. Perfect. So I have managed to connect to the unit now, which is why it's turned off. But uh, hang on, there is so many different things you can do with this light unit. It's really cool. So you can create presets, manual timers, but manual controls. Uh, so that's white, red and blue on. There we go. So now that is on. So you can just turn it on. I've called it Fush Room. I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. Anyway, uh, yeah, you've got weather, manual timers, play sets, but I'm gonna keep it on this for the minute just so we can work on this tank and then I'll have a bit of a play with this later. So now we've got our lighting sorted out that uh, we can dim down and we can have as a lower intensity for this cold water aquarium. I wanna quickly touch upon aquascaping. Now, aquascaping's, I'll be honest, a bit of a scary word and it's a word that I've noticed that possibly scares off a lot of new people. Really, when you Google aquascaping, there's all these insane things with rocks and wood and there's forced perspective and there's talk of different rocks in different angles. Aquascaping to me isn't that. Well, it is that. Obviously, it is that. But what it is is having fun and making something that you want, whether that's wood, whether that's rock, whether that's, I don't know, a teapot with plants growing out the top, whether it's a shipwreck. It's all scaping or designing in an aquarium. So do what you want, have fun with it, go and have a look at some other people's tanks, go and look around your local shops, see what you like the look of. But for this scape, I'm gonna keep it really, really simple. Now I've had a piece of wood ugh, in my fish room for ages. Now the reason, I, the only reason I picked it up is because it looked like a dragon to me or a dinosaur. I don't know if you can see, it doesn't really. Eyeball, mouth, pointy bit of the top of the head, bit of a dragon. That was the only reason I bought this. I bought it probably, I think it might have been when I built this fish room. And it was sat in one of these tanks for ages dry. And I've never used it. So my thought is, a piece like this costs, what, 30, 40 quid. So in the grand scheme of things, after you've bought your tank and your bits and pieces, this is quite a cheap piece. It might seem like a lot, but when you think this is gonna be the main focal point of the tank, it's perfect. So I think this is gonna go Oh, which way do I design it? We could go that way. Yeah, I quite like it that way, I think. So the dinosaur dragon head is on display. I think that looks good. So I'm just checking out in the camera. But yeah, I think that's gonna be cool. And then to go alongside our dragon's head, I'm tempted to put it the other way around, but then the dragon's head wouldn't look right, would it? No, it is that way around. But then to go uh, with our dragon's head, I think dragon stone is gonna work. Now this is a really easy rock to scape with because there you go. Let's have a bit of light there, there we go. So it's a really easy rock to skate with because it is so textured and you can make it look good really simply. The only thing I would say about Dragonstone is all of these little holes are normally or can be filled up with like a weird red clay. And I would say personally, you've got to wash this stuff fairly aggressively to make sure that it works. But I think that Dragon's head piece of Bogwood, if I can get it out of the way so I can put this piece in, doesn't stand up and then some of this dragon stone, because this will go like a proper orangey colour under the water. Now you could have this tank with just hardscape only, obviously it would look really cool once you've got all this dragon stone angled around and messed around. Obviously this is not the final sort of way it's gonna look, but once you've got all that in there, it would look really cool as a hardscape only aquarium. I can't do that. I like plants, just like, you know, look at the tank next door. I like plants. Now I'm not gonna go that crazy, but I definitely want a few little plants. Now again, with cold water aquariums indoors, they're not necessarily cold water. A lot of your tropical plants will go down to 18, 20, 22 degrees. If you're worried about your tank going a little bit cooler, then you'd have to look at the plants that maybe drop to 18. But like I say, most of the time my house sits around 20 degrees. So I'm actually gonna use some aqua soil in here. Now this is just gonna act as a food source and a nutrient rich base. Oh, there's a tearing strip on this. 
well that was nice <laughs> this is going to act as a sort of food source for the plants now i don't want to tip this on the floor but you can see it is pretty much just like balled up compost for aquarium plants I don't know if you can see that i've just dropped loads of it on the floor now this stuff will allow us just to plant into that and give the plants the best start and the best food source at their roots now I can also use this as a bit of a bulking agent to bulk up the back of the aquarium. So where this wood doesn't want to sit necessarily where I want it to, and it doesn't want to angle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of this soil in net bags, and I can use that as cushions to then angle the wood and angle the rocks into where I want them. So you can buy these net bags in loads of different places. Places sell them as laundry bags or vegetable bags. The vegetable bags are the ones I generally use, but I will link some down in the description because you can buy them and you can buy them as filter bags for ponds. So yeah, there's loads of different ways that you can buy them. Just pour all the soil into there. As you can see, it's in there. And we can even use this as a cushion, like so, to angle into the back of the aquarium. This is getting compost everywhere. Right, let's get this in. So as I say, that's given us a nice slope to work with. So we've now got our piece of wood sort of sat on these cushions and we can then cover that in a minute with some more rocks and some sand. You don't need to overthink this. This is one piece of wood, probably half a dozen little rocks and that's it. If you want to make it easy for yourself, pick a big imposing piece of hardscape or ornament or whatever you want get that in there and then build around it because well it's simpler once you see the rocks going in here in a minute I'll show you how easy this really can be this isn't set on the exact angle that I want it to be but I have got space for my filter to sit up in this top corner in a bit uh, I'm not gonna have a heater in there so I don't have to worry about that and I'm thinking a few rocks on the front down the sides Maybe one out at the back? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't think we want anything imposing. We want plants there to make it look a little bit greener. So let's get some dragonstone in there and see what sort of thing we can come up with. So we're just going to start placing a few random bits and try and work out what we want to do. Maybe I have to lift this up. So that's it for the dragonstone. We've kept it really simple. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Oh, and a couple of pebbles that you might be able to see sneaking behind there. They were just used to prop up the uh, dragon skull. So it's no point in wasting good dragonstone when you're gonna hide it. I suppose I've hidden that little bit back there, but not so bad. The other great thing with dragonstone is you can start off with a piece this sort of size. And literally, if you hit it with a hammer or hit it or drop it on the floor, you end up with pieces like this. And then they are so easy to work in amongst all the bigger bits. So it's a very forgiving rock to uh, put in your aquarium because you can mess around with it quite nicely. Now, Dragonstone is an orangey colour, so I think this is going to be perfect to team it up with like a orangey style beach sand in amongst it. And then once we get that sand in, we might just need to pop a few other little bits of Dragonstone in to finish off the sort of overall vibe that we're going for. I'm really liking this. It's like a Jurassic Park Game of Thrones sort of style skull and rock. And yeah, it's cool. Loving it. Anyway, orange sand next. Now I have pre-washed this a little bit from a previous build. So this was used quite a while ago. So I'm hoping this is gonna be clean enough to just pour and use straight in, but we will see. So all the sand is in, the dragon skull seems fairly secure. Obviously you're not gonna have a fish in there that is gonna do anything more than tap 
the rocks. So really you can go around and just check what's going on by just tapping all of the different rocks and things to see if anything will shift and nothing seems to be moving. Now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this piece of wood in place because I don't know how buoyant or floaty it's gonna be. It is the problem with a lot of aquarium woods is they like to float more than they like to sink. So all these contact points where I've got it touching the rocks and I've got one back there as well. I'm gonna get some glue in there, let it harden and that should mean that that piece of wood then will stay in place when we fill it with water. So now that I've hopefully slathered this piece of wood in enough glue to hold it down, fingers crossed, <laughs> it's a big bit of wood and there wasn't many contact points for the rock. I would always recommend the more contact points, the better, but we can always jam a rock up on top of it because the fish aren't going in today. So we could put a rock on top just to hold it down until it soaks in enough water because it will sink at some point. Anyway, so next up is planting. Now, as I've said, really most aquarium plants will probably do okay, if not really well, inside in a temperate or cold water aquarium, whatever you want to call it. Unless you put goldfish in there and then they'll probably eat them unless they're really tough. But we've got some tough plants going in here, so I'll show you them in a minute. But you should be able to get away with a good majority of the tropical plants. Have a look at the labels because most are tropical plants. Hang on, let me find one. Oh! Now these are the labels that I get with my aquarium panels. Now let me just turn it to manual focus because it will not focus this close in. There we go, that's a bit better for you. So you can see all the information is on there, the species name, the temperatures it will go to, the height, uh, what's that, oh, mid-ground or foreground planting, how much light it needs, so on and so on. Now you can see that this one here is saying it will go down to 22 degrees or 70, what is that, 71 Fahrenheit. So yeah, something like that would probably do absolutely fine indoors, but you can always measure the water temperature of your tank before you plant it up. Now, as I say, my tanks don't actually get that cold in here. It's obviously a warm room and there's a lot of tanks in here and it keeps the heat quite well. But most of your average homes will probably stick around the 18, 20 degrees mark, which will mean most of your hardy aquarium plants will be absolutely fine. But first we need to decide what plants are gonna go in here. So I'm thinking of a couple of tall things behind the wood to make the wood pop out a little bit more. Maybe something running down the hillside in front of that big piece of stone, maybe something behind it and then possibly a few epiphytes on the piece of wood itself. But I quite like the wood and I quite like the shape of it and I don't want to lose that like big imposing dragon head in the middle of the tank. So let's grab a few plants and see where we get to. We do need to prep them first though. The first plant we are going to go for in this tank is the cool Amazon swords. Now this is Echinodorus blaheri, as you can see there from Aquafleur, where I get all my plants from. Now these are going to be a great backdrop behind that piece of wood. The only thing I'm questioning is if they are a little bit too tall maybe. I might just try one. Oh no, no, once they're planted in the sand they'll be absolutely fine. Now one thing to bear in mind, they are super easy to grow. The one thing I would say is a lot of this growth is obviously grown out of water, emerged growth. Emerged? Yeah, I think that's the right word. But it's out of water growth. So this may start dying back once the water is full and then new shoots will come up from the bottom once they start growing their aquatic leaves. A lot of these new shoots down here will probably convert, but yeah, it's well worth being aware of. Some of the bigger leaves may die back. It's nothing to worry about. Just keep an eye on them. As long as the root's still there, it will do absolutely fine. Now, the other plant that we've got to go in here does the exact same thing as that, but probably more aggressively, <laughs> and that is the Crypt in the Valley. Now again, these with these leaves can die back a little bit when they first go into the aquarium, but it's nothing to worry about. Like I say, all the new growth coming through will be fully aquatic, but I think a few of them in the channel coming down from there, those in the back, and then maybe a few epiphytes in and amongst the wood and the rocks, maybe some Anubius Nana. I think I've got some Anubius Nana here. Yes, so I've got some nice Anubius Nana bonsai, which is the tiny version. So these leaves are proper small. Hopefully that will mean that I can place it in and around the big dragon's head, but it won't actually detract from the shape and the color of the wood. I think that should be enough. Nine plants, probably enough. 
we'll have a look and see how we get on with planting. Most of you seasoned veteran fish keepers will obviously know what I'm doing here, but all we need to do is tease these pots off, trying not to break too many roots, but it's not the end of the world because we can trim these roots back anyway. Obviously get rid of the label, and then we're left with this rock wool, which is like a weird foamy stuff. And all you need to do is start peeling that back, getting it off, and getting all of it off. There's actually two plants in here, which is always a bonus. And then, yeah, we can just literally work through and get all this rock wool off. A good little tip is using tweezers, which I can't actually see mine currently. I thought they were up here. Here they are. So you can actually use tweezers to actually comb it out. So you almost use it like you'd comb your hair and you can comb all of the rock wool out of the root ball. But I've got another eight plants to go, so we better crack on. Now that we've cleaned up all of our plants, all the root work is ready and we are gonna commence planting. So these big guys are gonna stay at the back and then we're gonna work towards the front with all the smaller ones. I do need a spray bottle because while I'm doing this, I might take a bit of time and I will need to keep them wet. Now I do need to remember that there is gonna be a filter in this back corner because the hang on filter that was on here, I have used in a quarantine tank. So I now need to put a new filter on this tank. Now lastly, we've got the little Anubiuses. Now they don't actually need to be planted in the substrate like all the other plants. These can be glued to a little piece of stone or just wedged. And I'm hoping to be able to just place them and wedge them between a few rocks and some of these bits of wood and they will eventually root and hold themselves there. Don't worry, I checked, the light is IP67 rated, so I've got no problems in getting a bit of splash back on it. So I think that's all the planting done. Let's just get rid of this water so you guys and girls can see you're actually in the tank rather than the mistiness that's on the front of the tank. That's a bit better, isn't it? Make sure I'm not gonna sit in a wet patch. So that is all the planting done in here now, I think. I don't think we need much more, I think. In this case, less is more, because I still want to see that big imposing piece of bogwood, and I think the fish are going to look wicked swimming around over the top of that. I think I am going to go for white cloud mountain minnows in here. They are a proper aquarium classic. They've been around for years and years, but once they get older, they look amazing. And they're such a cool little fish that gets overlooked. And the brownie bronze colour, I think, will tie in nicely with the orange and the brown of the wood. I think it's going to look really good. Now I need to start filling this up and hope that the glue has set and we'll hold this piece of wood down, fingers crossed. And I also need to get a filter on it. So yeah, we better crack on with that. So whilst that tank is filling up, I thought I better get a filter ready. Now the filter that was running on this tank was a hang on the back filter that is now running on my quarantine tank and it has got a few fish in there. So I can't really remove that one. So I opted for one of these little Interpet CF ones. It's just a little hang on internal filter. So it's quite cool because it's got like a little hook. Oh, maybe. There we go. Uh, we might want that in a minute. And we might want the instructions in a minute. I've never used one of these before, but I've heard cool things about them. So they're like a little cartridge design system. So you've got like 
an algae way sort of algae eating pad in the front to help you with algae you've got a floss and what i assume is carbon yeah carbon inside there so that will keep your colorants and smells and stuff down in the aquarium and then i assume this is a little biomedia one yeah look at that a little biomedia cartridge so you can see all the little ceramics so that's where all your good bacteria is going to live so really cool so they just slide and that's quite tricky to do when my face is behind the camera that one slots in there and then that one slots in the front they're quite clever really aren't they pumps in the bottom i'm assuming somewhere there's the pump oh yeah that attaches to the bottom side of there yeah nice little filter that's quite cool and the hook on the back so this hooks on so you've got four different height positions that you can put it on and then your suction cups stay in the aquarium and that hooks on like so clever right that'll do that's a nice little filter so whilst sorting out the filter i took my eyes off of the tank for two seconds and um disaster has struck i did not put enough glue on that piece of wood <sighs> so uh yeah that needs to come out i need to dry it off and we need to glue something heavier to it with a better quality glue i was using the cheap glue that i had upstairs and uh, i've just ran downstairs and got my proper aquascaping glue hopefully this stuff will well no not hopefully i've used this stuff in the past this stuff's way stronger and goes off this stuff was still a bit gloopy. So yeah, use a proper aquascaping glue or use Gorilla Glue. Don't use the cheap stuff that I just tried to use, otherwise your aquascape will get ruined. Uh, yeah, right, better turn that off and uh, get back to the drawing board and fix this. That just goes to prove it happened to us all. So I'm gonna try and glue that bit back onto there somehow. So you can use tissue as a bit of a go-between to like seal the gaps and essentially glue the whole thing together. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna have to do that. So it happened to the best of us, but hopefully with the new dozen rocks glued on, this might sink. It might not, but I'm hoping it will. Oh, that's way more sinky. Right, now I've got to make it look good again. That was quite stressful and it's definitely going to be a bit muckier because, well, that turfed a lot of sand up and a bit of the soil. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit cloudy. We have made one addition, which is a bigger Anubius in behind and the small ones are now in front. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. All the plants are in the same place. Fingers crossed this doesn't happen again. I have glued a lot of rock to it this time. So if it floats now, I'm giving up and you'll never see this video. So if you see this part, you know it's done all right. Now that we're full and we don't have to worry about the wood floating up, we can get our filter in. That's actually, that's been on for quite a while. Obviously it's taken me a while and that's not actually getting that hot. And this is on full intensity. So that's quite nice. It did, I did read somewhere on the back of the box that there's like a heat sink built in underneath here. So yeah, it's dispersing the heat quite well. On old LEDs, I remember you used to like rest your arm on it, burn yourself. Well, not burn yourself. That was an over-exaggeration, wasn't it? But they did used to get really hot. Anyway, filter, where did I put it? Right, okay, so we've got the suction cup mount that goes in. So let's stick that to the wall of the aquarium. And then, did I take all that out of bags? Yep, took all that out of bags. Plug, pull that out of there. Right, and then this one should just sit behind here. There is a maximum water line level I can see there, but that's nothing much to worry about with regards to this because it should just slot. I hope I left enough room with that bogwood. Ah, oh, like a glove. Now I'm gonna take a couple of seconds to fill up with water. Have I got that hook on? Yep. Nice. Oh, just tried to push it down, went too far. Right, okay. That's cool, that's in. Right, so I should have a plug behind here free. I don't know if this one's turned on or off. It is currently off. Let's turn it on and see what it does. Oh, look at that. That is silent. Then you just lift that up. 
I have probably got that boggled a little bit close, but that's okay, we can deal with that. Maybe give yourself a little bit more room than I have, but that's quite cool, you just lift that one up and then you can take all your sponges and medias out and then click it back down and away you go. Smart, okay, cool. That's a good amount of flow coming out of there as well. I have restricted it with the wood, but I think that's ideal for this kind of setup. I don't want it to be rushing around the aquarium. Now that the filter's all running, all that is left to do is add a little bit of tap safe to get rid of all the chlorine and chloramines. And then also a little bit of bacterial starter to get all that filter bacteria running in there. All that's left to do now is wait about a week to 10 days to get our first group of fish in there. Obviously I have got lots of different aquariums with lots of different filters on, so I may put a bit of mature media into here and just get that cycle kicking a little bit quicker. But if you're not doing that, a week or 10 days is normally long enough to wait, get your water tested or test it yourself with your own test kit at home, and then you are ready to put your first batch of fish in. I wouldn't go crazy, but we'll talk about that once I get fish into this tank. Yeah, cool. That was quite a stressful one. Anyway, I'll see you in about seven days. Maybe 10. It has been about nine days. Why are the lights shining? I don't even know how to turn those off. Hang on a minute. Right, sorry, Quinn had been in the room and had turned all of my twinkly lights on for his entertainment. Uh, what was I saying? So it has been about nine days since you saw this tank last in that last clip that was what, five seconds ago. It's cleared. The plants have settled in well, they are looking cool. The wood hasn't floated, which is always a winner. And I think we're ready for fish. But first, I've decided that I wanna make a few changes and not major changes in that, I want to add to it. So uh, first up, I wanna add some more detail stone. Now what I mean by more detail stone is essentially we've got these big stones. I say big, they're not overly big. They'd fit in the palm of your hand, but they are quite chunky when you compare them to the really fine sand that we've got going on in here. So I think, and I've got a few here that I've pulled out of my box, but as I was saying, Dragonstone smashes up really small. So it's a bit dark, but it breaks up really easily. So what I'm thinking of doing is just getting a couple of my larger bits, breaking it down so we've got a few little fragments and then we can scatter them in. And I think that will just grade the sand up to the rock. Just looks a little bit more cohesive. It's not necessarily necessary, but I think it will look better. Now this is my box of little bits and pieces, essentially that I save. I say little, that bit's quite chunky, but there is a few tiny little bits of dragonstone that have chipped off of bigger bits. And I'm hoping that I can sort through these and just get a few little nice little bits that I can mix into the sand. That is how easy this stuff breaks. Like it is quite crumbly in places. Some of it's really solid, like that bit there, I wouldn't be able to snap, but where there was only a little bit joining these two bits together, it was quite easy to snap. So it's a good rock to work with. That's exactly how I was thinking that was gonna look. It just goes from like grade one, two, three, four, rather than grade one to five instantly on the size of stones and sand. So that's perfect. Now the next thing I want to put on here is probably gonna divide opinions and it's something that's not used in aquascapes very often. And that is a little air pump. Now this is my air line that I've got with a very old air stone on it. I actually thought I had some new ones, but I don't. I just have this weird suction cup one that I got from somewhere. Don't honestly know where. But I'm thinking I'm gonna place that underneath this wood and it's gonna come out of what I think is the eye of the dragon. Right, where did that airline go? Somewhere there. There it is. So that can float behind there, that can come down to there. Old air pump, plug it into the front. And the moment of truth, will this work? Well, it's on. Doesn't seem to be working. Maybe there's some water in the line. Oh, 
Oh, okay. No, I'm thinking further in than that. Yeah, I like that. It's a little bit different. They don't often get used in aquascaping because they do gas off CO2 for the plants and so on and so on. There are a few reasons why you wouldn't use them, but I quite like them. We'll do a future video on like the pros and cons of uh, using air stones, but air stones are great as well because that's a bit of a sort of spot underneath that wood that isn't going to get much flow. So uneaten food and fish waste and things like that will sit under there. Whereas if you've got that air bringing water through and actually pulling water through, it will bring a lot of the waste out. So that's cool. So I think that's all of the changes I wanted to make to this aquarium. Now I have tested the water yesterday. It is crucial that you do test the water before putting your fish in there to make sure everything's okay. And this tank is ready and raring to go. I've put a little bit of mature media from another aquarium into the filter just to help it along. But to be honest, it's probably no need as long as you're not going crazy on the fish and you're only adding like six or 10 in at a time, especially on this size tank, you should be absolutely fine. Now I was very lucky, I visited my old shop the other day and they had a cool little group of white cloud mountain minnows. Now I've got them, I've popped them in my quarantine tank behind me and all it's to do is to acclimatise them to here and get them in. I think they are going to look so good. So this is where my little group of white cloud mountain minnows are living. There is a couple of other fish in there that you might be able to make out but they are for a future project all cold water as well which is cool but we're going to get the minnows out of here and get them acclimatized to the aquarium all right so i've just dipped a little bit of water out of the quarantine tank and now i need to find my net so that i can catch these fish out <laughs> Now, as I've said, these are the same temperature as the room, so they shouldn't need any temperature acclimatization, but they will just need a little bit of acclimatizing to make sure that the pH in the tank is the pH of the quarantine tank. It shouldn't be that different, but because of the rock, because of the wood, because of the plant, because of the substrate, all of those things can have an impact on the pH. So it's just worth making sure that these two are running similar before introducing the fish. Now these little guys and girls have had about 45 minutes to acclimatize, so they should be raring to go. They're all chilled out in the jug, absolutely fine. Now what I would normally do is turn the lights off, but what I'm gonna do for this is actually just move the lighting to the back a little bit, just so they've got a dim area in the front and a lighter area at the back. Obviously they've been living in my quarantine tank for a while now, so they're used to the light cycle that's in this room. They're used to being awake at this time, they're not travelling a long distance, but yeah, if I was moving them from a fish shop to an aquarium, I'd turn the lights completely out. Now I'm going to net these out of the jug because I don't want that water to end up in the tank because they'll have been going to the toilet in that water for a little bit and the filter's probably mature enough to deal with it, but it's safer not to add it. So let's get these little guys in. Oh, they're gonna look so cool. I think a lot of people forget about these fish that have been in the hobby a little while. Anyway, let's give them time to settle down and I'll bring you back to show you exactly what they look like when they're chilled out. Now I've given them a few hours to settle down and they are all over the place. They are swimming in the front, under the wood, round the plants. They are loving it in there and they are great fun to watch. They are super, super active. I think actually this is the first time, even though I've been keeping fish for this long, I think it's the first time I've kept a white cloud mountain minnow at home. I, I think, I can't remember ever keeping them before. Because these are the first fish in here, I'm going to keep the feeding really light over the next couple of weeks to make sure that the filter catches up with the amount of waste that these fish are producing. It is a mature-ish filter because it's got mature media in it, but you do still want to be careful. It is the one thing that most people get wrong in the early stages, is feeding the fish too much. Because it is the most exciting thing to do, they will come to the surface, they're all buzzing around. Yeah, but just ease off on it, just be careful with how much you're giving them to eat. I know that the air pump is gonna divide opinions, but it is just something I wanted to try. It's something I wanted to show off. Loads and loads of people buy them and use them. And in the right setting or in any setting, they can be really helpful. If you've got dead spots around the backs of the wood where flow can't get to and things like that, then this can help push that muck back into the water column and get your filter to essentially catch it. And if you've got lots of high demanding oxygen rich 
oxygen rich fish, I don't mean that, but oxygen demanding fish, again, it can be a useful thing. Big Malawian cichlid tanks, it's great for. There are loads of reasons that you would run an air pump and in aquascaping, they're not used so often, but I think in this kind of setting, it looks a little bit funky and a little bit different, but I know it is gonna divide opinions. So there we are. If you're looking at a cold water tank, this might be the right option for you. Zebra danios, white cloud mountain minnows, rice fish, varietas platys, tons and tons of small cold water fish out there that are way easier than goldfish. Maybe, maybe that's a video. Maybe that is a video. Cold water fish that are easier to keep in a small tank than goldfish. Might have to work on the title not being as long as that, but you get the idea. But anyway, I'm gonna crack on because I've got lots to do in the fish room before I'm finished today. I've got a tank that I've been scaping underneath the camera, which is a lot bigger than this one, probably three times the size of this one. And it is looking really good, even if I do save so myself. But watch out for that one in a future video. I'm gonna let these little guys and girls settle down. They're already looking good. Their reds are starting to pop. Yeah, looking forward to these guys coloring up. I'll see you in the next one.